Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well, we have something of real interest and a bit of a treat in my eyes today. Provided by one of our regular well-known subscribers, James Mower from Kingston in London. Um, he has provided us with something I think was perhaps a little bit close to his own heart. Um, I suspect he has got a little bit of interest in this one because he has a history, without going into too many details, he has a history in the British aerospace uh, industry and has worked uh, at the Dunsfeld site for BAE uh, where they built the Harrier and the uh, the Hawk Siddeley BAE Systems Hawk as well. Um, so he's very interested in the Harriers and all things Harrier and this is the next, I guess the next best thing. It's kind of um, the Soviet equivalent of the Harrier. The Yak 38 and 38M Forger A. Now this is their attempt to have a virtual short takeoff and landing jet for their military, particularly their navy. And this is the idea that they needed to have uh, a capability for the Soviet Navy. And this was developed, first came out, it first appeared in a variant, an earlier variant in 1970, but this actually came out in 1975 uh, and went into service with them, I think, in 76. Now, they didn't have any aircraft carriers at this time. So they were developing uh, their new uh, missile um, cruiser, the Kiev class which is a little, it's kind of a little bit of a parallel with the HMS Invincible story where, where we didn't want to call it an aircraft carrier either. I mean, because you're having these more user-friendly aircraft in terms of takeoff and landings, in theory, <laughs> they, were, they were going to develop a new class of carrier. And, and in 1976, the Kiev uh, flagship, the Kiev, which is a bit of an ironic name when you think about it now, because that is a city under attack by uh, Russia. But anyway, we won't get into that one. Um, anyway, the Kiev class came out in '76. This had been out already about a year, uh, and they had a new uh, naval capability they didn't have before. Now, I have to say that first of all, this is this, this aircraft is not not truly comparable with the Harrier because it is heavier. It's longer, it's not as quick, it doesn't manoeuvre as well, it, it has got a lot of disadvantages. And having seen, and we've talked in, on my channel here about the Sea Harriers and the Falklands War, and we know how extraordinarily capable that plane was. Now, it was, you know, it had limitations, it wasn't supersonic, and it wasn't a high level interceptor or anything like that, but medium to low level. Uh, it was absolutely exceptional and when we know this because of the performance it gave in the Falklands conflict whereby not one of them was shot down by an Argentine aircraft. One or two were hit by ground fire etc but nothing from another aircraft. They have an absolutely clean sheet of air to air combat kills and they shot down uh, I think was it 17 I think in total uh, aircraft. A lot, a lot. Now why is this not as good then? So, essentially, everything they seem to compromise on the Russians. Now, you could almost consider this, for those of you that have not seen this thing before, consider it as a mixture of the Harrier and the F-35, because this thing has two lift engines, which is why it's got this flap open here. I'll zoom in a bit more, rather than looking at me, you can see a bit more detail. So we have here twin lift engines, with a flap at the top and a flap at the bottom that open to give it the actual lifting thrust for it to take off. At the rear, you, it's not a very good picture, but you have two swivelling nozzles which is a bit like a Harrier. So it's almost like an F-35 here, it's a bit like a Harrier at the back. Um, but it has a smaller wing than the Harrier. These nozzles, by the way, only move through about, I think, 40, 45 degrees. It's kind of a compromise. It's kind of a... Um, seems to me like a bit of a jack of all trades and master of none. It, it wasn't quick, it couldn't carry much payload, very light payload indeed, much less than the Harrier. Its wing area is four meters, sorry, four square meters, so it's basically two meters, square meters per wing, less than the Harrier's got. And it, it, this is why it looks such a weird plane, because it's got this very long fuselage with all these different engines in it, making it incredibly heavy, relatively speaking. Probably about 50 to 85% heavier than it should be, ideally for its performance. 
Um, and it, of course it, it can't carry a lot of fuel because it's all really engines, you know, there's only a bit of fuel capability I think at the back. Um, that's where most of the fuel is stored I think, in this area here. This aircraft, it hasn't got a lot going for it and it wasn't really considered to be very successful. They have a very short range, short duration, they have an enormously high, and this is where James is probably agreeing, I'm sure he'll know more about this than me. Um, a very enormously high maintenance uh, requirement because you have these two lift engines uh, plus the main um, forward flying engine so to speak it's it's really it's got three lots of, of trouble you know I mean the Harrier concept works very well because it's relatively big wing on a very small plane that's quite light and the cleverness with the Harrier of course is it's Roger Gray Pegasus engine right in the middle and the cleverness is about how they basically use the nozzles to direct the energy from the engine using the puffer jets on the, the wing tips and in the tail etc and there's another one underneath isn't there? Was, there's a lot of them on the Harry, it always confuses me there's much more than I realised when I was younger but it's, the cleverness was in the years of R&D by James and his, uh, his older and more previous colleagues that were developing this technology um, they did a brilliant job at Hawkers uh, and they kept on going with it and they, they developed it and they got it lighter, and of course the later models of Harrier have got a lot of uh, carbon composites, and of course they have much bigger wings. You see the wings grow on the Harrier as it, as it ages, giving it far more. Um, you ended up with three pylons per wing, didn't it? So six pylons plus the fuselage pylons, so it could carry a, a much more increased payload. This thing, though, it was always, you know, in the maintenance works, one of the engines having trouble, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're unreliable per se, but the trouble is you've got three engines, you've got three lots of maintenance, it's a nightmare. So it wasn't really very successful, and actually we threw them in 1991. Uh, I think that coincided with the withdrawal of the Kiev class cruisers, aircraft carrier if you will. I'm not going to read what it says on the side because it's basically, I've just already covered all that and I did it in English. <laughs> anyway, um, our good friend James, uh, who, as I say, he's a good friend of the channel, he's a regular contributor. Uh, he's had, a, I won't go into the details again, but he's had a few problems recently. I know he's had um, one or two health issues, and he's lost his dog, who became very poor. So I'm very sorry to hear that, his dog's called Bramley. So I'm very sorry about that, James. But thank you, really. It's very nice of him that we've been through all that recently, and he's, and he's still managed to come up with this stuff for us. So really appreciate it, and I will be... That's nice, I like this one, I've got to be honest, I like it. Coveting this one. <laughs> now I shall get this back to you in pristine condition. Um, but let's have a look at what it is, because I must admit, although I sounded a bit negative about the aircraft, it's a fascinating concept though. It's another one of these where they've reinvented the wheel, haven't they, with this concept, and it's not really a good reinvention. Instead of just copying the Harrier, which is what the Chinese would probably do today, they've tried to make it different and they wanted to put their own slant on it, and they're trying to take shortcuts and it never works, you end up compromising too much. Anyway, let's have a look inside and see what we got. Oops, not doing very well with that, I'm just going to gently put that over there. Right, now then, I have to say, I'm a bit of a fan of Hobby Boss, or I'm becoming a fan. Um, of the Far Eastern manufacturers, it's kind of one of my favourites, because I think they always make a little bit more effort for us. Some of the communications of uh, you know, instructions and things. Let's have a look. Hmm, I was speaking too soon. Ooh, okay. Well, it all looks good so far. Let's take a look see. So, he wants me to open the bags, so I'm going to try and do it as carefully as I can. It's a fairly new blade. Here we go. Let's put these lights on just to get a little bit of it. Mm, is that going to make things worse or better? See, I go into the dark when I put those on, that's the problem. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe that one. Mm, that's better. Well, this one's actually sort of half open, so it's going to make. Oh, oh, no, we don't need to cut it at all. It just opens very gently. That's good. Right then. All back to front. I'm getting carried away already because I know I'm quite keen to see this one, I've got to be honest. First things first, let's get back into some sort of order. Organisation. So, instructions. We've got here quite a decent, um, what well, looks like a decent intro if I can get my zoom to work, there we go. <laughs> and it's not, it's been very awkward, I think I need to change my battery, here we are. It's got a little stops and starts for some reason, there we are. Okay, so it's got, um, there's no history here, there's a very basic history on the side, so at least they gave you some. Um, and then we do get a sprue, uh, sprue tree map here. 
and shows you all the decals and the various uh, various parts and then we get straight into it so we'll zoom in a little bit more so we have got building up your pilot seat with the headrest and it looks it looks very detailed hobby boss do the things like cockpits quite well in my experience and uh, they always seem to have a bit of a better effort at it than people like airfix no pilot though which always does annoy me a little bit but that's definitely a trend as we spoke of recently nose gear cabin so you're building up Looks like quite an impressive bit of detail there. And then you've got your nose. The nose is in two halves, which I'm never a big fan of because you often end up with a bit of a seam down the middle. But having built up your cockpit and got your instrumentation in there, that's going to be... Uh, that section literally sits on top of the, the nose gear uh, bay. They call it cabin. It's the bay, isn't it? So that goes in there. And then there's... What's that? A little light. Is that a light? Interesting. Then we're going to build up our, here we go, these are the lift engines. This is where it gets really complicated now. So we've got these lift engines and then we've got these very Harrier-like rear nozzles, which I spoke of. Only two though, only one on each side, not two like the Harrier has. It just seems to be unnecessarily complicated. Even in, I'm talking about the, I'm not talking about the model, I'm talking about the aircraft. You can already sense it, can't you, that just looking at the parts of the model, how complex it is. You've got two engines at the front to lift up and down, you've got it jet engine down the middle that's got to go around that and then you've got to have this nozzle system at the back it's asking a lot isn't it it's, it's one of those aircraft that probably flies great when everything the wind's in the right direction you know um, a bit like some of our end of world war ii nazi era stuff uh, again perhaps a little bit crazy and uh, flying in the face of some log more logical choices they could have made anyway i have to say the intakes very Kind of Harrier-like, come Mirage 3-like, just by the illustration of them. Uh, and then you've got these big strakes. This is to obviously stop air bleeding down the side when you're trying to use the lift engine um, to blow uh, to blow the air down and get the maximum pressure here. So you've got these big strakes to stop air from flowing over the side. And then we've got uh, several pitot heads, etc. I like the instructions, they're clear though, they're nice and clear. Um, yep, we've got the canopy and the windscreen going in here with a gun sight on it of some description. Then we've got your option of open or closed uh, doors, or, or flaps I should say, on the actual lift engine door. That's quite interesting. Then you've got a whole load of intakes and pitots and aerials. Then we have uh, the main wing, the left wing, which are very stubby little wings on this plane. Don't know why they designed it to be so you know, heavily wing-loaded with these tiny wings. I think that was another thing they got wrong. But I think they're trying to keep the weight down is the problem, uh, for sure. Anyway, we've got stubby wings that look a little bit like F-15 wings in this, in this illustration, if I'm honest. And you've got your little pylons that go through the weapons. Then those are going to come in and be joined into the main fuselage. Then we've got our tailplanes and rudder and it had a parachute system because they said that if, it, if the lift engines failed they could do a natural carrier landing and deploy the parachutes. I'd rather you than me. Well, it's not something I'd like to try, not one of those tiny Russian Kiev class carriers. Makes the Invincible look big, you know, in terms of the deck anyway. <laughs> and then we've got this, uh, this nozzle assembly area where you're going to put the shrouding around it uh, and the blast area, the sort of blast plates just behind. And then you've got your main undercarriage legs, right and left. They're going to go in uh, just under the wing. You see how stubby and weird the, the wings look now, can't you? It looks kind of odd, I have to say. Then you put in on your, your doors. And uh, completing the doors on the front bay as well. And there's another couple of intakes and pitot heads and things. And then again, we've got some strakes. And this is again to stop the uh stop the blast from bleeding they're trying to aid the flow of the hot gases when they're blasting downwards so like you have on the top they're trying to make it very linear and put these big strakes on which, which of course the harrier had as well uh, and then you got your weapons so we've got um a ub-16 rocket you know seen some of these in the recent you know, ukraine conflict so maybe the less said the better UB-16 rocket launcher, UPK, that's like a Gatling gun, like a, similar to the Aiden cannon on the, uh, on the Harrier. 
and then you've got another different type of uh, UB32M's just a bigger version I think yeah 32 missiles as against 16 and then we've got an air-to-air -air missile for fleet defence I mean this did give the Russian Navy um, a fleet defence capability which they hadn't had before but uh, the word on the street kind of thing was that they were just not very reliable and they use a lot of fuel they've got short range so they were not they would not have been as effective in a Falcon scenario as our planes were uh, well I think the Mirage 3s would have shot these out of the sky to be quite honest because I don't think they're ex especially manoeuvrable at low, sp at low level that looks out uh, anyway um, well, again, Hobby Boss do these rather nicely, don't they? I, I do like the way this is done. A nice painting and marking sheet, all in colour, nice shiny glossy paper, clearly marks all of your stencils. Now look at look what I mean. Look at the wings. That looks like something straight out of Jerry Anderson to me. You see a lot of these ungainly looking aircraft that Jerry Anderson had in Thunderbirds and his other series. And this, you know, it's not so bad on the side profile. It's when you see how little wing it's got. It's like a Harrier times two, but it's got little stubby F-15 wings. Just looks wrong, doesn't it, somehow? Anyway, it gives you all the colour call-outs very helpfully on that side. And you've got four options in, in terms of the scheme. Four? Oh, three, sorry. So this is the main one. So it's got green underneath. Green underneath on a naval plane. Hmm, not sure Sharky Ward would agree with that scheme, but anyway. Like we all know that he liked the, uh, the dark sea grey. Um, then we've got um, what's obviously been used over in the Middle East, probably Syria, because I know that these, I think these were used in, no sorry, Afghanistan. They were used in Afghanistan for sure. So that's the Afghan theatre markings. And then finally we've got, I think that's another naval option, isn't it? Um, I, I don't get why it's got the dark grey underneath. That to me is completely the wrong way around. I would have thought that scheme should be upside down. <laughs> How very odd. How very, very strange. I mean, uh, is it me? Is that, does, that make, does that make sense to anybody else? We all know from the Sea Harrier experience that having white underneath was a bad idea. Why would you want it to be very, very dark underneath? Unless I suppose they're operating maybe in the polar region or something. Not sure about that. A night? Night operation? Very odd, but anyway, very nice presentation. So I'll tell you what, um, if the other uh, Chinese manufacturers were as good as Hobby Boss are, I think they'd be doing a lot better and I wouldn't be criticising them all quite as much. So, the plastic, let's have a proper look. Uh, it is an aircraft that interests me, I don't want to sound too negative about it. It's always, it was always a bit of a, oh, they've got a Harrier. Oh no, they haven't. <laughs> you know, I'm sure James is not in agreement. Um, if this got into a dogfight with a Harrier, there'd be one outcome, and only one, <laughs> and it wouldn't be very positive for this, I can tell you. Um, not manoeuvrable enough, ungainly, short range, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, let's have a look at these pieces of plastic, because Hobby Boss typically are very, very nice on their moulding, and I think they're going to be here too. So, yes, lovely recess panel lines, recess riveting. Uh, hatches, there's all manner of detail here. Look at this. That's very, very nice. Um, yes, I mean, that's uh, kind of up there with Hong Kong model standard, isn't it, really? Nice moulding, there's no flash here anywhere at all. Look at these huge strakes that I was just talking about before, these sort of blast uh, flow, what, what, what should we call them? Uh, directional flow strakes, is that a good description? I think it is. Helping to make sure, and there's the smaller ones for the top of the aircraft. Uh, but they all had drag, don't they, when you've got this many? I mean, the fact you had to have two lots of them, that's twice as many as the Harriet has, and they're quite big lengthwise as well. And then you've got your uh, rudder over on this side here. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's a really impressive sprue, to be honest. Look at some of the fine detail. The detail is just as good underneath as it is on the sides, look. It's really finely done. 
I mean, that's almost Tamiya standard, isn't it, really? Yes, I like it. That's a really nice sprue, so that's off to a great start. So, despite my misgivings about the full aircraft, this is looking quite good. Now then, weapons. Let's have a look at some weapons. Didn't do. We didn't do the decals. Which is a bit remiss of me. I think I should do them. Can I get in without ripping, tearing, or cutting? No. Simple answer. Well, I think it's a big one anyway, this, so I think we're just going to be very carefully slitting it. Like so. Yes, we can nicely reseal that one, James, no problem. Uh, and this is the other thing I like about Hobby Boss. Can you see that they've got a piece of tape here? They always put a piece of tape so that it doesn't immediately float off and your decal gets scruffed, scuffed or damaged. So uh, this is what I do myself. I, most kits I get a piece of Tamiya tape and put some over, just like they've done here. Same thing. In fact, I think I did it on one of James's other kits. I think I put a piece of tape on because I think it's the Airfix one. Um, so, zoom you right in. I won't peel this back, obviously, but I'll just partially peel it back. Look at those, some nice decals there. They look nice and bright, very sharp. No excess carrier film at all. Particularly good in that respect. Very, very tightly, uh, tightly uh, filmed. You know, again, the, the, the actual image is tight against the carrier film. Beautifully done, actually. I like it. Has this been done by Cartograph, I wonder? don't know who does it. Mate. It could almost be Cartograph, they're so good. Can we see that? Let's see if we can get it. There you go. You can see what I mean? There's no excess. You know, there's no great bleed around the outside of any of the stencils. It's very tightly done. Really good. Yes, yeah, so those are nice, nice decals. Very bright, very crisp, and tightly, tightly produced. Look excellent, those do. Right, put those away. Then, the weapons. Now, weapons, okay. Again, I don't think I can really do this without, without a bit of. Um, the old lightsaber. Well, what we were talking about the other week on the chat, we were talking about Lord of the Rings analogies, wasn't it? Where I was accused of being like Gollum by James, I do believe. And uh, he said that I, I get very precious with my matchbox kits. Well, it's the, the Wraith Sword or whatever they call it, isn't it? The, uh, the mighty weapon from Mordor. Right! Now then, oh cool, so it's two, two that are the same, and they're very nicely packed, look at the way they've done that, that's very sensible, oh you, this is a lovely sprue, look at this, this is a good kit, it's looking like a 9 out of 10 plus this is, look at this, here we go, you see these rocket launcher tips have been done. They're really hollow. Can you can you make that out? That's beautifully done. Oh yeah, fine fine moulding here. You got your air to air missiles. Is it acrid? It's, it's, it's similar missile to the acrid, I think. There's your Gatling gun cannon pod. But those uh, those, those have been slide moulded, I think for sure. These uh, the heads of these Matra type. Matra type rockets, they're not Matras obviously, but very similar sort of style, but those are those are nicely, nicely moulded. Look at that. So crisp, you know, the actual apertures are beautiful. That's fantastic. And I can see why it's got the protective piece of uh, foam over it, just to make sure that they don't get damaged. Wow, love it. I'm impressed. Every sprue seems to get better and better. So what can what can possibly come next? I wonder. Uh, this is a nice kit. This Hobby Boss, very nice kit. Uh, we have another one here, big sprue. Oh, and yes, we can get into this one without cutting, which is always good. That's next. Right then. Whoa. 
it's a big one. It's a big one. So we've got all sorts of um, pylons. We've got all sorts of pitots and aerials. We've got these very Harrier style jet nozzles for the rear, which is in two pieces, which I don't like. Uh, I hope they fit together nicely because you're going to end up with a seam down the middle. That's the only thing I don't like. If you remember on the um, uh, the Kinetic uh, Harrier series, the GR3 and the the C Harrier, they were beautifully slide moulded nozzles. They looked like resin. They were so good, you know. Not so good here. Um, I don't know if there's any detail you can see inside the actual nozzle. Not sure about that, but. Yeah, don't be too critical, but it's just a little bit of weakness that when you have two two sides that have to be joined. You know. Look at the tail planes; aren't they tiny little tails relative to the aircraft? Again, you know, the, the very small flying surfaces giving quite a high wing loading. Uh, not not helpful for its performance, I don't think. Um, you've got some pylons here. We've got some main legs in the carriage. Got the jet fan blades there, and we've got some nice looking wheels. The moulding looks absolutely superb, I have to say. Really nice. What is there not to like here, really? You know, it's just all very, very sharp and very, very crisp. It's lovely. Love it. Nice, nice. Uh, I even got tread on the. You see it on the nose wheel here in the tyre. It's even got tread on there. Yeah. That's really, really nice. It's a smashing kit, I've got to be honest. This could be a really high, this could be the highest rated Chinese kit I've ever seen, actually. I don't know if it's possible, plus I feel that something nasty at the end. I'm going to not make any predictions yet. Uh, will this come out or not? Oh, yes, it will. So we're opening these without any, any knife. One or two of them are letting me. No. <laughs> <laughs> look at this wing! Do you know what that looks like to me now? I said it looks like an F-15 wing. Well, it, it does either an F-15 or a Jaguar wing. But it's very small relative to the actual aircraft. It looks tiny. It almost looks as though they've put the wrong scale parts in, like they've mixed up a 72nd and a 48th. So, if you know what I mean, it's kind of like a 48th scale fuselage and a 72nd scale wing. I can see why it was... It was it was always going to struggle this aircraft. I think they, you know, and they had to have the wings folding as well. They had to fold, so uh, they would actually fold at this point here, where my finger is. That's that's, that's the dividing line, because otherwise they couldn't get them onto the ramp. They had a very quite a narrow ramp um, on the Kiev class um, aircraft carrier. So if you think about it logically, they they didn't design the carrier right, did they? Because it's not a big aircraft and it's not a big wing. It's tiny. You know, it's, it's wingspan's no, probably no different to a Sea Harrier. Overall wingspan, I mean, because Sea Harrier's got a bit of a fatter body, I'd say. Um, but with a bigger wing. And they had to still had to fold them, so that, that again, robs it of, um, you know, sort of general uh, dynamic strength. Structural strength, is what I'm trying to say. So it, and it reduces the opportunity for more uh, pylons and loadouts on the wing. It, it just creates a potential weakness, doesn't it, really? Um, I don't understand why they didn't just design the ship to have a bigger elevator on it so it can fit in. But the parts are beautiful. I'm being critical of the aircraft, not the model. The model is lovely. You, you almost wonder why they didn't sort of sit down and the, the boss man in the Kremlin or wherever didn't just say, why have you done all that? Just go and copy the Harrier. Because that's what the Chinese do, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of, you know, logical, if you think about it. Don't go reinvent the wheel, just, just make me a wheel. Yeah? Now then. This is a little bit tricky, he says. Can I get this off? How does this come off? Come on, give it a clue. It's like a Krypton Factor puzzle, I think, this one. Well, it's very well protected, that much is certainly true. Clear parts. Oh, these are nice clear parts. Look at this. This is fantastic, this kit. They've done a great rendition of it, I think, here. Look at this. Here we go. 
That's very, very nice transparent part. Look at the little rivets. Can you see the little rivets that are all around the frame of the windscreen? Oh, that is amazing. That's a really nice bit of clear part. Wow, that's really nice. And again, you've got rivets around the framework, all the framework here uh, of the front of the canopy. Absolutely brilliant. You've got your instrumentation there. Instruments. That's nice as well. A lot of detail. It's a lovely, uh, lovely bit of clear parts, to be honest. See if I can get it back into this rather strange puzzle that they gave me. I have a feeling I want to get it wrong, we have to be careful, we don't want to break anything. I may just um, apply a bit of tape to that. I think the safest option. Sorry, there's a bit of noise in the background, sounds like one of my neighbours has decided to strim their lawn or something. Uh, I think just for safety, for James' sake, we're just going to tape that because uh, I don't want to use force and then damage anything. There we go. There we are. Go back in there. So that the noise. <laughs> we just decided to have some related gardening, I think. Last one. Last one. It's looking good, is this? Oh, here we, here we have the nose. Right, okay, so let's have a looky. You can tell, this is, I, mean, I mentioned earlier I was a little bit concerned about the two halves, you know, as a design because you can have a lot of problems with the join, can't you? So, well, we hope, just judging by the quality of the engineering of their parts though, I think there's a fair chance it's going to go together really, really well. That's really, uh, that's really, really nice. So really, again, there's lots of detail on the, uh, the surface detail, it's amazing. That's a stunner, actually. This is where you've got the, um, the sort of uh, intake door over the lift engines. You've got the closed version or you've got the flaps open. So I guess they can have it at half flap and then when they need to open it, this thing actually lifts up completely to open up. Um, and there we have it really. So, wow. Quite a few smaller parts on this sprue. Um, that is that's a nice kit. That's a I thought it'd be a decent kit, but it's a better kit than I imagined. Actually, it's a really, really nice kit. So, it is nice. There's all this noise behind me and the strimming and guarding that's going on. Good lord, what is going on? Here? Okay, so a Yak 38M Forger. What we're going to give it then? Well, what didn't I like? Um, the only criticism really is they don't give you very much history. It's a little bit on the side, that's it, and it's not much at all there. I think I'll knock it just half a point off and give it nine and a half out of ten, and I think that is absolutely fair. That is a beautiful kit. Um, I've, I've seen two or three hobby bosses lately, and I've been impressed by all of them, but that's probably the best one yet. So I love it. Nine and a half out of ten. Hope you'll give me a ten out of ten with a thumbs up. Smash that like button, folks, and make sure you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, make sure you ding the notification bell to get early warning of the next video coming up. And I just want to say thank you very much to James Moe. It's a really lovely kit, actually, much better than expected. Uh, expected good, got superb, frankly. Um, it's no Harrier, but it's a beautiful model. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much to everybody. Uh, please stay tuned for the channel and keep your eyes open for some more similar vids coming up soon. And in the meantime, Thank you very much for joining me. Please look after yourselves, take care, and see you all again soon. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.